Before diving too far into linear functions and equations, it's really good to be familiar with a lot of the terms that you'll hear uh, moving throughout the section. So we're just going to explore a little bit about what you call the different parts of these functions and equations, that way they are more familiar. Let's go ahead and start off and look at these two. One of the very first things you want to identify in either one is just what are your variables. Remember that these are usually your unknowns in the equation, and we like to represent them using uh, letters like X or Y, or maybe even things like A, B, C. There's also several numbers in uh, each of these two, uh, and depending on where they are or what they're associated with, we can call them a few different things. If you can see a single number all by itself, then we will call this a constant. That means it's not being multiplied by anything, uh, but it may be added or subtracted. If you see a number that's being multiplied by a variable, then we call this a coefficient. There we are. Now one big thing that you'll hear uh, in terms of parts of functions or equations are terms. Terms are pieces that are being added and subtracted. So this 3x, the entire thing, is considered a term. 2 is also considered a term. So another way that you could describe constants is a term that is made up of only a number. This entire piece since you know we're subtracting all of it, is also a term, it's just a, a fairly large term, 7 multiplied by x minus 4. Be careful, the 7 by itself is not a term because it is actually being multiplied by something else. So that's why we would take the entire thing as a term. Same thing down here, here's a term, 4x, and all of this would be considered another term. Now, one great way that you can recognize linear functions or linear equations is that all of the powers on your variables uh, at most must be 1. That means you don't want to see anything squared, you don't want to see anything cubed. 1 is the highest power you want in the entire thing. Another great way that you can recognize a, a linear function or equation is that all the terms are either made up of a single constant or they're actually a coefficient and a variable put together. Now you may be looking at my examples and going, wait a minute, how does this fit in? It doesn't look like it's a, a constant, and it doesn't quite look like a coefficient. Well, in a few cases you might have to end up rewriting these, but once you do, you'll see that every term in here is definitely made up of, say, either constants or a coefficient and a variable put together. So I'm just multiplying this negative 7 through. And sure enough, once I do that to both parts, you'll see that my terms are a 3x, a 2, a minus 7x, and a positive 28. Everything is either a constant or, you know, a coefficient variable pair. Now, since the highest power on the variable can be 1 at the most, oftentimes we call these first order equations or functions. Let's quickly go through a few examples of trying to recognize linear functions and linear equations. This will help you identify them a little bit better. Okay, here's a good example of a linear equation. We can see that the variables in there are raised to the power of 1 at the most. Now this looks very similar, but it's actually not a linear equation. Wait a minute, you're saying, well, how come this one's not a linear equation? Well, for starters, it doesn't even have an equal sign. Well, if I did put an equal sign, does that fix it? Mm, unfortunately, not quite. Notice how we still have two variables that are being multiplied together. No good.
Okay, here's another good linear equation. Again, imagine maybe distributing out the 4, and you can see that all of the terms are being added and subtracted. The x is only raised to a single power. Oftentimes, it's probably a little bit easier to recognize the ones that are not linear equations, especially if they have higher powers or square roots or things like that. All of our trig functions are definitely not linear equations as well. Alright, so hopefully that will help you identify which ones are linear and which ones are not linear. Now some other terms that you want to be familiar with as you're working with a linear equation are these. A solution to a linear equation is a value that when you substitute it in, it makes the equation true. So oftentimes we're interested in solving linear equations and finding those values. Now we call an equation conditional if you can only find a few values that actually make it true. A lot of the equations that you'll come across will probably be conditional. This is because you'll either find one or two values that will actually make it true. Uh, an equation is considered a contradiction if no matter what value you try and use, it is never true. Check out some of my later videos and we'll look at examples uh, that are contradictions. So we'll go through the solving process and we'll see that nothing works. On the other hand, if you are looking at an equation, we call it an identity if no matter what value you put in there, it's always true. So it doesn't matter if it's 5 or 6 or 2 billion, it's always true. So check out these uh, different terms in my future videos so you can see which is conditional, contradiction, or an identity.